Controlling gravity. It sounds impossible. However, if you were alive during the 1800s, the idea of controlling electromagnetic waves would also sound impossible. In fact, the very idea of an electromagnetic wave hadn't even been thought of until James Clerk Maxwell introduced the concept in 1864. And it was not actually seen or proven until Heinrich Hertz demonstrated the propagation of electromagnetic waves in 1887. After that, innovation in the area exploded exponentially. And we are right at the beginning of that exponential curve in our understanding of gravity. In 2016, scientists observed for the first time a gravitational wave and proved Einstein's theory of gravitational waves were correct. We are literally at the same point in our understanding of gravity as we were of electromagnetic waves 130 years ago. Now, the more out there implications predicted by Einstein's theories, such as actual faster than light travel, seem like they may be more fact than fiction, especially when you consider the potential properties of metamaterials. Perhaps even more interesting though, with our newfound ability to detect gravitational waves, we could be able to detect such craft, and maybe we already have. Since Einstein revealed his theory of relativity, it is widely accepted that the speed of light is an absolute speed limit for the universe. Zipping around from star to star like in Star Trek is purely the domain of science fiction. At least that's what most physicists thought until 1994. Yes, the speed of light is a speed limit for anything traveling through space, but what about space itself? Can space move? If so, how fast? Most physicists can tell you this answer quite handily. I'm not one, but there are links with more scientific explanations down below. The answer though is yes, space does move. When it's said that the universe has been constantly expanding since the Big Bang, the mechanism for this is space itself is expanding. Everything in space is expanding away from each other. And there is no center for this expansion everything is expanding away from everything else. This means that at the far end of the universe, there are objects that are accelerating away from us faster than the speed of light. Since the expansion is caused by space itself expanding rather than anything moving through space, there are no space speed limits being violated. Miguel Alcubierre, inspired by the warp drives of Star Trek, mused over the possibilities of expanding and contracting space-time as some sort of propulsion. What would that look like, and is it at all possible? Well, Alcubierre proved it is possible when he published his paper, The Warp Drive, Hyperfast Travel Within General Relativity. Instead of using Einstein's field equations to describe astronomical phenomenon, Alcubierre put them to work on a hypothetical situation where space-time is contracted in front of an object and expanded behind. By doing this, he showed that you could create a bubble of space-time. Within that bubble, you'd be in free fall and feel no acceleration. But the bubble would be pushed along by this expansion and contraction of space-time, and you could ride this space-time rift and go arbitrarily fast, well over the speed of light you're really only limited by the amount of energy you can put into warping space-time. And as crazy as it sounds, Alcubierre's ideas hold up to mathematical and scientific rigor. There is some controversy over whether actual faster-than-light travel is possible, and there's some interesting discussion about potentially needing to lay out a energy highway at sub-light speeds, which would then enable other crafts going at faster-than-light speeds. But that's more of an aside, and there is a general agreement that Alcubierre's drive would work in theory. The, the first model of such a drive was purely theoretical. Alcubierre used a mass of the equivalent size of the entire universe. Still, his idea intrigued many, and others soon made improvements to the mathematical model. And by 2012, updated models needed only kilograms of energy to sufficiently warp space-time to enable faster-than-light speed travel. The scientist who came up with these last refinements, Harold White, did his work on behalf of NASA's EagleWorks program. 
which is actively looking into developing such a drive. They are currently building devices which would test it on a small scale, and they have these artist renderings which give us a hint as to what a final product might look like. With a foil or a field around it, it might resemble something like a Tic Tac. Despite all of this exciting and promising information, there's still one big hiccup for developing a true, faster than light Alcubierre drive. The energy required to expand and contract spacetime isn't just normal energy, it's negative energy. Although predicted by quantum field theory, it's unclear exactly what form this negative energy might take. Dark energy and dark matter would have negative energy, but of course we haven't observed these either. There are some ideas though. Alcubierre himself postulated that the Casimir effect may be a way of producing negative energy. The theory behind the effect is this. Quantum physics tell us that in an empty space, a vacuum, there are tiny random energy fluctuations at every point within the vacuum. These energy fluctuations are of positive and negative energy, but they balance out and are so tiny that they are insignificant. These tiny energy fluctuations though, they are not impossible to interact with. If you were to put two conductive sheets of metal extremely close to each other, as close as the wavelength of these tiny energy fluctuations, you'd be able to block out these random vacuum space fluctuations in between the metal sheets. It's a similar concept to a Faraday cage, but at a nano level. And having blocked out the vacuum energy to some degree within the plates, the vacuum energy outside the plates would be greater than inside. The pressure differential would then force the plates together. This force pushing the plates together is theorized to be negative energy. And I can't help but notice that the apparatus for the Casimir effect is essentially meticulously spaced out layers of metal. Purported recovered UFO fragments have had a similar structure, and the nascent field of metamaterials has shown other bizarre capabilities with objects of similar structure as well. One could imagine an advanced metamaterial that would have layers of conductive metals situated nanometers apart to generate negative energy. Perhaps many of these layers layered together to achieve an amplified effect. This energy could potentially be amplified and directed using other metamaterial properties in the system that would further amplify and direct the generated energy. But this isn't the only theory linking metamaterials to a potential Alcubierre drive. Theoretical physicist Jack Sarfati thinks he has figured it out. He envisions a device that could test his theory. He describes a metamaterial rod with two metal plates on each end of the rod and a wire coil around the metamaterial rod connecting the two plates. This would form a series oscillating inductor resistor conductor circuit. The key, Sarfati says, is that the metamaterial rod would have properties such that the speed of light would slow down enormously within the rod. This, Sarfati claims, would produce a detectable gravity or anti-gravity field. He theorizes that an actual craft using these principles would have multitudes of nano-sized versions of these devices which would produce the necessary fields to warp gravity to fit the Alcubierre drive equations. Now, there is no doubt that some of Sarfati's work falls out of the mainstream of scientific research, and some may discredit him due to some of his wilder claims, but he doesn't shy away from the mathematics and physical laws, and he presents a very compelling case and his theory should be judged on his mathematical claims. There are certainly some unanswered questions in the journey to create a real Alcubierre drive, but the theoretical possibility of it is extremely exciting. One thing I didn't mention, because nothing is traveling through space at any speeds, anyone within the bubble of an Alcubierre drive would not experience any g-forces at all, nor would they experience any time dilation. You could go visit the nearest star system in an hour, zip back, and be home to join your family for dinner that day. If these Alcubierre drives are actually possible, it raises another interesting question. Why aren't we seeing more alien visitors? Maybe they just keep out of sight and we see them occasionally, such as in the Navy Tic Tac videos or historic sightings throughout the years. But wait, 
we now have the ability to detect gravitational waves. Shouldn't this enable us to definitively answer the question of whether there are gravity drives zipping about around us? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Not yet. Interestingly enough, the LIGO and other gravity observatories do experience signals that they can't explain quite frequently. However, this is somewhat expected. These devices are so precise that even cars hitting their brakes near the facility can cause detectable noise in the devices. But it is an interesting question. I reached out to Rana X at Harkari, asking him if they consider potential gravity craft when looking at their signals. Unfortunately, I received no response. However, as I continued to dig into the question, I believe I came across the answer myself. LIGO and other gravity observatories are specifically designed to look for deep space gravity activity. The frequency of waves which they can detect are incredibly small, and they are linked to the wavelength of the laser light they use. This means that LIGO only detects an incredibly small fraction of gravity waves. Most pass through the apparatus undetected, such as the gravity waves caused by the moon rotating around the Earth and the Earth rotating around the sun. Similarly, an actual Alcubierre drive would have a gravity frequency much longer than LIGO could detect. It would, however, be incredibly interesting to try to devise an interferometer that could actually detect an Alcubierre drive. I don't believe it is currently possible, but if anyone has any ideas on what a theoretical detector might look like, I'd be very interested. I came into this topic thinking that it would dampen my outlook on interplanetary travel, but instead, it has opened my eyes to new possibilities. If NASA is publicly researching this drive, imagine how far along the top secret military capabilities might be. And if faster than light speed travel with no time dilation effects is possible, the idea of actual aliens swinging by to check us out doesn't sound that crazy. What do you think? Does this change your opinion on the recent Tic Tac UFO stories at all? I I'd love to hear what you think. I'll continue to go down these rabbit holes and report back, so please subscribe and join me in this journey. And as always, thanks for watching.